Ever since season one of Prehistoric Planet came out, an animal that has been on my mind is none other than Tarbosaurus. Now, this animal is not very well known compared to T-Rex, but I've heard of it for at least the last 25 years, as long as I've been reading and following dinosaurs. It's always been a name that I've seen. But again, it's not necessarily an animal that's received a lot of attention. And I do like the way that the Prehistoric Planet series brands the Tarbosaur, which is the Asian equivalent of T-Rex. I think that really sums it up for the average person that doesn't know much about dinosaurs. But nonetheless, in season one, when we saw the big Dinochirus out in its marshy habitat feeding, I really had hoped in season two that they would take that same Dinochirus and have it potentially being stalked by a small family of Tarbosaurs. That would have been my idea if I had been in the director's seat or even the executive producer's seat of Prehistoric Planet Season 2. But that's not what we got. What we got, though, really blew me away in its own right, which is we saw sauropods moving through the Gobi Desert, um, almost in a Grand Canyon type of backdrop, moving through these big cliffs and snaking their way. really enjoyed how we had the Nemectosaurs moving with the Mongolian Titans. I would have loved to have seen more of this elusive sauropod known as the Mongolian Titan, perhaps one of the biggest sauropods that's ever existed. I suspect we don't see more about it and hear more about it is just because it's really only known from a footprint, I believe. So it's really cool to hear it mentioned. And obviously in that scene where these sauropods are moving, I'm assuming the Mongolian Titan was the biggest of them all. There was one sauropod that towered above the others this monstrosity of an animal, but nonetheless, it was really fascinating to watch that scene as they moved through this rocky, these rocky canyons in order to get to this lush marsh swamp habitat in the middle of the Gobi Desert. So they had to cross this. And I really enjoyed the scenes where the Tarbosaurus kind of came out of the caves. You know, you really gathered this sense that they had been sleeping, probably just like they did in season one, probably a lot of lounging and sleeping just like lions would do on the Serengeti. A male lion sleeps most of the day. So I envisioned these Tarbosaurs just hiding out in these caves, hanging out. I'm assuming the caves offer a little bit of coolness. The temperatures out there were absolutely brutal. They said something like 160 degrees on the surface of the sand. And you know, when you measure temperature in our world, it's always measured in the shade. But in a habitat like that where there is no shade or shade is very minimal, um, you may as well measure temperature in the sun. And them speculating that it was 160 degrees on the surface of the sand just almost makes you feel like these dinosaurs lived on the surface of the sun. Very intense, very brutal life. So nonetheless, as these sauropods are moving through this canyon in order to navigate, in order to get to this marshy swamp, I envision this family of Tarbosaurs just sleeping and eventually maybe they start to feel the ground rumble, they start to rise up. We get these beautiful images of the head of one of the Tarbosaurs, just beautiful, spectacular, I like to call it desert coloration. And they start to move in, they start to see that the herd has potentially walked into what is an ambush, meaning that they got, they got stuck in a certain area. And I believe the one that falls is the one that dies. I'll have to watch that again. If you, if you know, let me know in the comment section down below. But there's a sauropod that stumbles, and it looks like maybe it breaks a leg or something, and it falls, and the rest of the herd moves on. It looks like that's the one that was actually eaten by the family of Tarbosaurs. But I would have loved to have seen the Tarbosaurs do a little bit more hunting. I know that we speculated that they did not take the animal down. Which again, um, it's almost like a love-hate relationship. Yes, I would have loved to have seen the Tarbosaurs in action. Um, I've talked about this for many years in, in my magazine, Prehistoric Magazine, that one of my dreams in life would be to see a pack of uh, excuse me, theropods trying to take down maybe a sick sauropod. Now, we did not see that. What we saw kind of was life happening, which is these sauropods were moving, and as their big limbs and their big tails got intertwined, one of them got pushed forward and fell and maybe maybe broke some type of body part and it was left behind, left to die. And this family of predators moved in. That's very realistic. You know, I think even in the modern day animal world, predators, top predators will do whatever it takes to survive. If it means hunting and taking an animal down, then they'll do that. But they are opportunistic and they will take advantage of whatever is presented to them. And I do commend Prehistoric Planet 
season two for showing us that even though Tarbosaurus was the top apex predator of Asia 66 million years ago, it still would have needed to catch some breaks along the way. Those animals caught a break. They did not have to have an encounter with one of these enormous sauropods, which could result in death or even serious injury. I imagine that if a Tarbosaur went down due to an encounter with the sauropod, I imagine that the others in its species would turn on it and potentially cannibalize that, that fresh meat, that free meal. So nonetheless, I really enjoyed the scene. Um, some of the imagery was spectacular, watching the, the big plumes of dust kind of slowly come up into the air. You really gathered that there was giant animals moving in and about these canyons. Now, a little bit of a disappointment. I really wish that we had followed that family of sauropods to this marsh, lush swamp habitat. I, I really wish that we got the final payoff. Meaning, you know, it's like, it's like wildebeest crossing a river in the Serengeti. One wildebeest is sacrificed in order for all of them to get through and cross the river and the crocodiles have their feast, but the herd continues on. I really wish that we had seen that with this scene, that we would have gotten to visualize and witness this herd of sauropods finally making its way to this lush area where they could feed and perhaps walk into the water and just relax. Would have been really cool to see. We didn't get that. Um, nonetheless, I love the scene. I really enjoyed Badlands. Let me know your thoughts on this. This was one of my favorite scenes in the entire series of season two so far, which is these sauropods crossing through this canyon and this family of tarbosaurs coming out of the cave. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. Take care.